Hello and welcome to a special edition of My Model Corner. Over time I have received multiple requests for a tour of my model collection. Most of the models I have built have not survived my youthful play in war games as well as the ravages of time, so part of my presentation will be a virtual tour sprinkled with memories and stories of my own model building, which I hope you might find entertaining and may reawaken your own joyful memories of the hobby. Before I begin, I'd like to give a big shout out to Alan over at OldModelKits.com. He graciously spent his personal time to provide images to aid in this video episode. If you're a builder, collector, or looking for a very special vintage gift, please check out his website. The kits date back to many eras when you, your parents, grandparents, and even your great-grandparents may have shared an interest in scale model building. So I mentioned in a previous video that the first kit I ever constructed was a stock race car when I was 7 or 8. It was molded in white and probably was a Ford or Chevy, but other than that I couldn't tell you anything about it. I remember it was badly painted, glue everywhere, the parts and decals misaligned. I found a photo that amazingly provides a lot of information and narrows the focus to the near birth of my lifelong interest in models and miniature things. It is Christmas in Chicago, and my sister is holding up her marionette dragon present, and I'm displaying my Britain's Limited U.S. Civil War figure set given to me by my dad. Without a doubt, I am eight years of age in this old photo. Through the modern era of computers, scanners, and Photoshop, we can take a look at the holiday bounty on the floor already opened. And there they are, my second car model kit ever, in Aurora Battle Aces of the Road Porsche. And nearby, partly obscured by a football helmet and a booklet, is my first ever armor piece, the monogram Flak Panzer IV tank. This was definitely one of my very favorite models as a child growing up, and the one I can say really got me interested in the hobby in general. My mother would rather I learn the violin or the piano, but a boy wanting to be a boy, I wanted to play the drums, seek adventure, action, and build things, then destroy them. However, she enrolled me in a model of the month club where I would receive a random set to build every four weeks or so. It could be anything by any company. I'm now nine years old and behind me is the USS Missouri in 535th scale by Ravel and this was my very first model sent by the club and my very first ship build. I love this box art cover and spent many a time closely looking it over. Below that is my second ship model, the 570th scale Bismarck, also by Ravel. And if you look closely sitting in this tin pan is my model of the GB. My mother bought that one for me and painted the red on it as well. I remember being disappointed thinking, what kind of goofy looking plane is this? Is this thing for real? But it is of course an icon in aviation history. My third ship build was the USS Arizona and one of my all-time favorite ship kits to build as a kid. I thought it was a really interesting looking vessel. My Arizona was often floating in the bathtub and I frequently daydreamed of myself being able to shrink down onto the deck where I'd make my way from the stern, taking different stairs, up to the boat deck and finally climbing onto the bridge or onto one of the mast housings. What an imagination. Anyway, this cemented my concentration more onto ship sets than anything else. I continued to build many ships, often receiving new models every birthday and Christmas. I had an entire fleet and my pastime was sprinkled with other kits that I get from the monthly model club in the mail, as well as other types from friends and family. One of those subscription models was the Sop with Camel kit. I did a decent job, but the wing cables didn't come out very good, probably because I was using my mother's sewing thread. It sat in the closet in disrepair until I saw the great Waldo Pepper and I set out to fix my model up again. But then came the Tom Daniel crazy car era. 
I found out that this was a popular line and it did really well for the monogram company back then. Other than Rommel's Rod, I was not a fan. But month after month I kept receiving this type of model from the post office. Sometimes I wouldn't even open the kit and they soon began to pile up in the closet. My mother noticed and when she threatened to terminate the club subscription, I didn't really object. I felt at the time I was just receiving what companies couldn't get off their shelves. So began a break from model building. I began to collect new and old comics, often buying any startup series hoping I was investing in a future success such as Superman, Spider-Man, The Fantastic Four, and so on. I even bought four or five copies of the first issue of a new story run called Star Wars. It turned out a movie version was about to be released soon too. While it didn't take long for Star Wars to absolutely explode across the country, a friend of mine saw it when it opened and he couldn't stop talking about the sci-fi space movie. I finally got a chance to see it at the Esquire. I had never seen anything like the excitement I was seeing outside the theater. The line was eight people wide and it went around the block. What in the world was going on? Like everyone, I was amazed with Star Wars. There had been nothing like it before. I ended up seeing Star Wars 29 times that year. Well, so what, right? It was with the initial release of the NPC Star Wars kits that I got back into modeling. First the X-Wing, and later on, the Snowspeeders, the Darth Vader TIE Fighter, the AT-AT Walker, and finally the best kit I ever built in my early years and the proudest I was considering my skill level, MPC's Millennium Falcon. I spent countless hours on that one even doing a little kit bashing to add a little more detail from some of my broken up ship models. I continued to build a smattering of various other kits including the original Battlestar Galactica offerings. One kit of note was the largest I ever constructed in my youth which was the MPC 124 scale Stuka. I was building and painting it while my sister was playing her Billy Joel Stranger vinyl album over and over. To this day, every time I hear she's always a woman, I am immediately transported back to my time working on the Stuka. I attempted to save some of my models when it was time to move away from my boyhood home. I wish now somehow I had saved them all no matter the inadequate skill or disrepair. I picked just a few to send off ahead including my beloved Millennium Falcon. Unfortunately, when I received the package sent to myself, every model inside the large box was smashed to pieces along with the memories tied to them. So we've reached the point where I can begin the portion of our journey of models that still exist in my collection. Let's call this section, My Middle Period. This X-Wing fighter is my oldest surviving and complete model. It's actually the third X-Wing I've ever built and this was completed in 1994 or 1995. It's basically a reboxing of the same MPC kit I built as a boy. Over the years, the laser cannons have been knocked off from time to time, so they may look crooked at some angles here. This F-16 built in 1996 was geared towards replicating one of the Vipers I actually worked on in my career at the time. This USS Missouri I built in 1998 is obviously much larger than the one I built a lifetime ago and is the first kit I used photo etch, stretch sprue rigging, and most importantly an airbrush. Next came the HMS Prince of Wales with a more complicated camouflage paint pattern. And finally the IJ and Yamato. Each one shows some improvement over the last. I assembled a few World War II planes which I present here. I don't remember which manufacturers molded these and I couldn't use the decal registration numerics to identify the kits as they are the same ones used by different companies. While the paint jobs are better than I did as a kid, there's not much in the way of proper detailing and weathering at this point. This poor Avenger suffered a shelf collapse many years ago and I've never gotten around to repairing the damage. It looks like a crash landed on a carrier deck. And finally I hearkened back to my youth and built another flak panzer. I then stopped building for the longest time in my life, almost 13 years. Moving on to the rebirth of my interest in building scale models, you'll recognize these completed kits from this channel's presentations on the internet. To mix it up rather than go in a chronological order, I'm going to exhibit them from my least viewed model build video to the most popular as they stand presently.
I hope you liked this walk along memory lane. Take care, and we'll see you later.